My own. My own. I am. Okay, sweet, sweet. All right. Um, turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 18, verse 9 through 15. Genesis chapter 18. Okay. First, I'd like to give thanks um, first to um, Brother Cordry, the pastor. Um, and all the staff here at the Anchor Baptist Church. This is not an opportunity I take lightly. Um, what an honor or privilege it is. Um, I thank the Lord for giving me this opportunity. Not deserving of it in the slightest, um, but it's something that I don't want to take advantage of in the wrong way, but it's something I want to glorify him and, and do what he wants out of it. And so I'm thankful for the opportunity. But um, let's read this. And then we'll get right into the message. Well, then we'll pray, and then we'll get into the message. Okay, let's read here. Genesis chapter 18, verses 9 through 15. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to thee according of the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Sarah and Abraham were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with them. I'm, I'm sorry. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, I'm sorry, yeah. And the Lord said to Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I have a bear a child, which am old? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Last verse here. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And last, laugh. Now let's look at this uh, verse here, verse 14. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And let's pray. Dear Father, I, I pray for your help this evening. God, I, I, I need more than your help, Lord. I need you to show up. God, I need you, Lord. Just like the song, all is vain unless the spirit of the Holy One comes down. God, I need you. Father, I speak through me to be a help to your people this evening. I'm thankful for this opportunity. And, uh, Father, I pray that you just allow me to be a help and get me out the way and don't allow my nerves to be a distraction to what your people need to hear. I love you, and I thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And uh, just like we're reading here, let's read that verse again one more time. Is any, uh, verse 14, chapter 18. Is anything too hard for the Lord at the time of point I will return to thee according to the time of, yeah, time of life, and Sarah shall have a time, I, uh, shall have a son. And so up to this point, we see that Sarah... And Abraham have had Ishmael, or Abraham and um, Hagar, her handmaid, have had Ishmael. And so, um, yeah, have had Ishmael. And so they've already noticed, already realized that Sarah is not going to have a son. It's not happening. There's no way. In verse, um, verse 16 through 17 in chapter 17, yeah, 16 through 17 in chapter 17, when God first tells Abraham that he's going to have uh, a child, another child, God, uh, God tells him, and Abraham laughs. He, he laughs in God's face. He said, there, there's no way Sarah, she's, I'm, I'm, he says, I'm 100 years old and she's 90. How is she going to have a child being this old? Even the Bible explains in verse 11 of chapter 18, it clearly points out that people her age don't have children. She's this old. There's no way she's going to have a child. And so, and then Sarah, he got also tells Sarah and she laughs about it also. And so they're both in disbelief and total disbelief in that there's no way that Sarah is going to have another child. There's no possible way. And so we see here that man's hands are tied. There's, no, there's nothing man can do here. They're too old. Abraham and Sarah, they understand. God, we're way too old. You want, to, you want Sarah to have another child? You want Sarah, I'm not another child, first child. You want her to have a child? There's no way. She's way too old. Nothing, there's nothing man can do here. Man's hands are tied. Exodus chapter 4, uh, verses 10 through 12. Go and turn there. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. What do we see? We see here Moses. And Moses said unto the Lord, uh, said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here, heretofore, sir, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or deaf, or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. Moses just killed an Egyptian man, and God calls him to be a leader. Moses, he fled from God for 40 years. 40 years he fled, and he was he, he, 40 years away from everything. He couldn't speak. Moses can't speak. I, 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 God comes to him. He's like, God, Moses, I want you to be my, I want you to lead the children. I want you to lead my people. I, I want you to be the leader. Moses said, God, there's no way. 
I can't even speak. God, I, do you hear me? God, I, I can't speak. How am I going to do this? And so just like with Sarah, Moses realizes his inability. See, he, he can't do it on his own. God, our hands are up. Then what are we going to do? There's nothing we can do. God, there's no way. And so, God, what are you, I'm just going to follow you. What do you want? I mean, he says, Moses, he specifically says, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. God, I can't speak. God, how am I supposed to be a leader when I can't even talk? You want me to do this and do that, but God, I can't talk. And so we understand the situation that Moses is in. And so once again, man can't get the job done. Man can't do it on its own. Once again, we see in the Bible. Turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 17. One last place. You should see this here. 1 Samuel chapter 17. It's not where the mic goes. 1 Samuel chapter 17 is my favorite story in the Bible. I love this. this here. Verse 33 to 37, what do we see? And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of, from, a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him, delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy service through both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. And this here, this verse here, watch this, just this, this, this is it right here. David said, moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine, and, said unto, and Saul said to David, go, <clears throat> go, and the Lord be with thee, be with thee. A giant sc- skilled in the art of battle. He, he, he's... He's been doing this since he was a child, by the age that, by where David's at. He's been doing it from his age, a giant who knows what he's doing when it comes to fighting. He's covered in armor, and he defies the armies of the living God. Verse 24, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. They were all scared. They, they, they said, well, there's no way this giant, you see him? How are we going to defeat him? Look at him. That's scary. And so once again, we see that man can't do it. He can't do it on his own, but God. What do we see here in verse 37? David said, moreover, the Lord had delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear. He would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And so David not only knew that God did, but David knew that God will. David said, this is what God did for me before, and God did this, and God's going to do this. And so Philistine, you better be watch out, because this is my God, and this is what my God is going to do to you. And so they were all afraid, and they said, there's no way. We can't do it. We can't do it. Just like Sarah, just like with Sarah and Abraham, we can't do it our own. But David steps up, and he says, God, I need you. God, you're the one who's going to get this done. God, you're the one who can get the victory. God, without you, it's impossible. And so I asked the question tonight, just like, just like the uh, question that was brought up to Abraham and Sarah from God, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too difficult for God? Is God's hand not able to reach to a certain area? Is there any limits that, are, that God has? Does God have any boundaries? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? And so I ask the question to us, the challenge. Ask yourself this question to each one of us. What kind of limits have we set on God? In what ways have we prohibited God from doing this, from doing that, from doing great things through us? In what ways have we prohibited God's hand? And so... And so what is God waiting for us to do? Number one, we need to trust God. Trust God. David was able to believe that giant was going to die because he trusted knowing God's will. He said, this is what God is going to do. I believe in God. I trust God. And so, I, God, I, I know this is what you did before, God. You helped me out before. There's no way you're not going to help me out this time. He put his trust in God. And what did God do? God came out with victory. Okay. And then Matthew 14, 28, we're talking, talking about Peter. And uh, Matthew 28, chapter, uh, verse 28, uh, chapter 14, you don't have to turn there, I'll read it here. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. In verse 29, he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he said, but when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and began to seek. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And so we often criticize Peter saying, oh, well, Peter got afraid and he, 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 he got scared and he saw the wind and all these things happening. We got scared. But we don't, when God, when the call comes to us, when God says, I need you to do, do, do this, I need you to do that, we, we don't even answer the call. And so we can't be so critical when it comes to Peter who did what God asked him to do, who did what Jesus asked him to do. 
when we, when the exact same thing, God is asking us to do the same thing. God says, I need you to do this to my church. God says, I need you to be a part of this. Amen. And we don't even answer the call. And so it's all up to us. It's us. It's not God's fault. God is just, is anything too hard for God? No, nothing's too hard for God. God can do whatever he want. Amen. God can do anything. There is no limits to God. God is not prohibited by anything that we see today. Amen. Nothing. And so it comes up to us. Peter trusted Jesus and walked on water. He walked on water. But he trusted God, trusting Jesus. He said, Jesus, this is what I know needs to be done. This is what I know you want me to do, and so I'm going to trust you. And he walked on water. And so then we need to try God. Judges chapter 6, verses 36 to 40. Judges chapter 6. You can uh, go and turn there. Judges chapter 6. Grab a quick drink of water while you're turning there. Amen. Judges chapter 6. Talking about Gideon. Verse 36, it says, And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor, and the dew be on the fleece only, and be, uh, and be dry upon all the earth beside. Then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. And it was so. For he rose up early on the, on the, on the morrow, and thrust the fleece together, and rained the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And Gideon said unto God, let not thy anger be hot against me. He said, God, I, I'm sorry, I have another request. And, it, and I, will speak this, I will speak about this once. Let me prove, I pray thee. But this, once with, but this once with the fleece, let it now be dry upon the fleece, and upon all the ground let there be dew. And so he, he switches things up. He says, okay, God, you did this, but I just want to be sure. So let's see if you can do this also. Okay. And so that's what happens. And God did so that night, for it was dry upon the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. David, I'm sorry, Gideon decided to try God, and what did God do? He said, Gideon, I appreciate you trying me. Gideon, this is what I'm going to do. You know, if you try me, I'm perfect. I, I'm omnipotent. I, I know everything. I made everything. Gideon, whatever you need from me, I'm going to do it. There is nothing stopping me. God says, nothing is too hard for me. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Just ask, what did Gideon do? Gideon said, okay, I'm trusting Okay, God, if you do this, okay, then I'll do it. Okay, you did that. But well, I just want to be a little sure. If you do this also, then I'll, then I'll do it. And then God did it. God came through like he always does. And so in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians verse, chapter 1, verse 9, God is faithful, but whom we were, we were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God is faithful. Okay, this is what God said he's going to do. This is what God is going to do. We can believe his word. We can trust him. There is no, there is no doubting. There is no saying, uh, I wonder if God, no, no, no. This is what God said he's going to do. So God's going to do it. We can trust God's word and that he's faithful. It says it here, and it's God, we can trust God. It says in another place that God cannot lie. God can't lie. We trust God. Try him. He will always come through. Jesus never fails. God does not fail. God is not, throughout the Bible, we see people who tried God in, in order to glorify him. But we also see where people tried God, and God had to, God had to show his mighty strong hand. Ananias and Sapphira decided to lie to the man of God, Acts chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. Hey, they, they come to God, or they come to the man of God, to Peter, and they said, we're going to sell this piece of land. But then they end up holding back a piece of, a piece of the price. They, they are a piece of the, um, yeah, they a piece of the, the, what they're going to sell. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they ended up holding it back. And so that happens, and so the, um, so the man, he dies, and then the woman, she walks in, and she says, and Peter asked her the same question, and what does she do? She lies also, and, and Peter asked him, he says, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, are you guys crazy? You just, like, why would you lie on behalf of the Holy Spirit? Why, why would you lie saying this, that? Why would you lie? Christians, but the same thing comes to us. Why do we lie? Why do we doubt? Why do we say uh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, when God has made it clear, when God is doing all these things for us. And so God said, okay, okay, you leave, you leave me no option. This is what I'm going to have to do. Same thing with Pharaoh in Exodus. Pharaoh, hey, you, why won't you let my people go? He tells Moses, he says, Moses, Pharaoh's going to keep hardening his heart, so I'm going to keep sending plagues. To tell, to those, all those plagues. Pharaoh, why don't just let my people go? And so this is what I have to do. This is what needs to be done. Second uh, Kings 1 through 10, we see Elijah calls the fire down from heaven. You know, Elijah asks God to call, on fire, call a fire down from heaven. And that's when God's mighty hand is shown, saying, this is what, God, I need you to do this for me. 
And he does it for him. The fire is called down from heaven for Elijah. And so then my last point here, take God. We take God just like what David did, just like David did. David said, he, the, the Lord had delivered me from the paw of the bear and the paw of the lion. This is what God did for me in the past. And so there's no doubt that God's going to do the exact same thing for me again. We take those things that God has given us. We take those blessings that God has blessed us with. We take the, all the great things that God has done for us. And we say, this is what God is going to do for you. Why? Because he did it for me. Why? This is what God is going to do because he did it in the past. There's no way he's not going to do it now. God, I can trust you. God, I can believe your word. God, I, can know, I know you're going to do this because you've always been faithful. God, you're faithful. We serve a faithful God. Amen. Amen. We can trust God. So we need to tell others about how good God has been. God has been great. Amen. God has been good. And so take God. Take, it, take what God has revealed to us. Take all the good things God has done for us, the blessings God has given us, and we take it and we tell others. And we keep it with us. We don't just forget it. No, we remember. We say, I remember God did that for me. Excuse me. I remember how God brought me through there, and I remember God, and I know that God's going to do it again, so we can trust God. And so the question comes up again, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too difficult for the Lord? No, nothing's too difficult to the Lord, but what does it come up to come to us? We need to call upon it. Jeremiah, it says, call unto me, and I will answer and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. Call unto God. And God, what did he say? He said, I'm going to show you great things. You don't know. Great things you've never seen before, but what do you need to do? You need to come unto me. Amen. So it's God's strength. It's by God's power. By, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. So trust God. Yes. First, like I said, we need to trust God. We need to try God. God's going to, God has proven before. He's faithful. God's proven this is what I'm going to do. God has proven that I'm always good. I'm always great. That's what God has proven. And then we need to take those things that God has revealed to us and take those things that God has brought us to and tell others and remember it for when God has another test before us. And so let's remember that the one who created everything we see today wants to use me and you and has the power to do anything. And so he works through us. And then we also understand that he has the power to do anything. Amen. So what's prohibiting, from, what's prohibiting us from doing these straight things of God? It's us. Yeah. It's us. Yeah. It's not God. Well, what do we see? Is any, no, no, nothing's too hard for God. It's not God. Yeah. It's us. And so it's by God's hand. It's by God's power we can get these things done. Let's pray.